Good evening all. Can I ask that uh, everyone be upstanding to welcome Clarence City Council Mayor, Councillor Brendan Blomley. I acknowledge the Tasmanian Aboriginal people as the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet. I pay respect to elders past and present and recognise their continuing spiritual connection to the land. Before we commence with tonight's meeting, please let us all pause for a quiet moment of reflection and respect before we commence with the council meeting. Thank you, councillors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. This meeting is being broadcast live on YouTube and what is said in this meeting is not protected by privilege and there is a link to the agenda papers on council's website. Moving on to item number two, uh, Councillor Walker has a leave of absence and I note that uh, Councillor Kennedy is joining us uh, by Zoom this evening. Uh, and uh, also just note that um, uh, our Chief Executive Officer is uh, not present at the moment. He has leave, so the Acting uh, Chief Executive Officer, Callan Pass, joins us this evening. Um, moving on to item number three, are there any declarations uh, of interest of councillors or close associates? There being none, we're now heading to our omnibus items. Uh, the first one, 4.1, being the confirmation of the minutes from our last council meeting held on the 19th of December 2002. These have been circulated. Are there any issues arising? There being none, we move now on to 4.2, Mayor's communication. And uh, my diary entries from the 20th of December through to the 23rd of January uh, have been circulated, as well as um, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Alison Ritchie, Councillor James Walker and Councillor Richard James, who have uh, attended events uh, on my behalf. Councillor Mulder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I refer to your uh, diary entry for the 7th of January 2023 and a meeting with Chair of Stadiums Tasmania. Are you in a position to provide us with any form of an update regarding um, the question of Bellarive Oval and its future with or outside the concept of Stadiums Tasmania? Thank you. Thank you for the question, Councillor Mulder. Um, it, the 17th of January, that, that meeting took place. Uh, the uh, Chief Executive Officer, uh, Mr Ian Nelson, myself met with Mr Michael Malouf AM uh, and some of his officers. It was a meet and greet. Uh, Mr Malouf is uh, in recognising that uh, Clarence City Council as uh, owners of Bunsen Arena, a uh, key stakeholder, is very keen to reach out to us. He did make the point that um, uh, other board members have not yet been appointed. Uh, they will be, that'll be announced uh, by Cabinet in the very near future but there will be a number of months before Stadiums Tasmania is up and running fully. So it was just a preliminary meet and greet. Councillor James, did you have a question as <coughs> yes, well? Yes, along the same lines. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, has there, was there any discussions between the parties regarding the uh, stadium at Macquarie Point as to whether that would actually be the umbrella group of all stadiums in Tasmania should it go ahead? Short answer is no. Um, there was very general discussion about um, what stadiums Tasmania uh, uh, would, would the number of stadia it would comprise. Uh, as you'd be aware, none of that's yet been locked away. There's some um, well-progressed discussions with Utah Stadium and Silverdome, and obviously there's the My State Bank Arena as well. Uh, but Blunston and uh, there's one on the northwest coast as well. Uh, are behind those other three stadiums at the moment. So, in short, uh, no. And I'm sorry, I can't provide any more detail than that. Uh, Councillor Warren. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, with re regard to your list of engagements, congratulations on a very bu busy January. Um, and similar to my colleagues, I know a number of these are meet and greet, um, uh, but also there's a number of um, ones in here that look as though they could be more strategic. For example, meeting with Minister Street regarding the Clarence Sports Centre and also meeting with the Lord Mayor. So my question is, um, how do we as a council, and a relatively new council, have input into what you are presenting in those meetings? Because we haven't had a chance to workshop um, any sort of council position on a number of issues yet. Sure. Um, and how do we find out what, without 
going through everything here, how, how do we have the opportunity to be more involved in these strategic meetings? Yeah, well, those two meetings, thank you for your question, Councillor uh, Warren. Uh, the, it was by the invitation of the Lord Mayor uh, that I met with her, and that was uh, uh, principally uh, talking through how we work as uh, two of the Metro Mayors uh, and some of the issues that are important to us, and Ferries was front and centre there. Uh, for Lord Mayor, it was obviously at Mac Point Stadium as well. Uh, and light rail, and this was in context to just uh, beyond the 16th of uh, January issue with the um, with the the truck uh, accident on the uh, on the Tasman Bridge. Um, so infrastructure and, and transportation were definitely uh, front and centre of those discussions. The meeting with Minister Street um, was uh, again uh, both Mr. Pask and Mr. Nelson were present at that one, and I'd be prepared to offer a briefing. Uh, to colleagues in a workshop setting. It wouldn't be appropriate here in an open forum. Okay. Uh, but, um, and as always, if there's any uh, diary entries that colleagues would like more information about, I'm only about a phone call away. So very, very open and uh, very keen to ensure that you are as well brief as possible. If I can just Councilor follow on Warren, yes. I, I guess my feeling is that it's more efficient if we find this information as a group rather than one-to-one -one phone call for 11 councillors. So um, if there's any way of us being kept up to date, a briefing would be ideal. Sure. So just, just so I'm clear, your suggestion is that I go through my diary every meet and greet and provide a briefing to colleagues? No, as I said at the beginning, I'm particularly interested in the meetings that might have strategic impact where you might be required to present a position of council. For example, ferries, sure, I'm sure that everyone here would agree, but there are probably other things that we as a relatively new council would see as priorities that we would like sure. you to be discussing with the Lord Mayor. So it's those sorts of meetings where it would be valuable to take the position of the council rather than just the Mayor. So, Councillor Warren, thank you. Uh, I might say that uh, I did not know what the union was when the Lord Mayor extended an invitation to me. Uh, I've known the Lord Mayor, uh, not as well as some, but for a number of years now. And um, um, it's, uh, as you know, I don't uh, unilaterally act uh, um, as, as the Mayor. I'm one of 12. Uh, but as I say, if there's diary entries here that you think you'd like more information or are strategically important, by all means, please then pick up the phone and have a chat with me. Now, I appreciate you've only been given this tonight, and there might be something there too we can look at as well uh, into the future, having this um, distributed more um, in a more timely fashion. So, thank you. thank you. I take your point, and it's a point well made. Any other uh, questions from colleagues on item uh, 4.2? Right. Uh, there being none, uh, I move now on to. Uh, uh, 4.2.1, which is a copy of a letter uh, that I circulated to colleagues early today from the Director of Local Government, uh, Mr Matthew Healy, uh, and I now uh, table that letter. 4.3 on the Council Workshops, noting the agenda briefing was conducted on Friday the 13th, immediately preceding the adjourned Council meeting on the 16th. That's the only workshop or gathering we've had uh, this, this month or so far this year. 4.4, General Manager, uh, sorry, Chief Executive Officer, are there any uh, <laughs> petitions to table? No, no right. petitions. Thank you. 4.5, reports from outside bodies. Uh, there's nothing to report from me. Are there any other reports from Council uh, and Special Committee and other representative bodies that colleagues would like to table or talk to? There being none, moving on to 4.6, the weekly briefing reports. The weekly briefing reports of the 19th of December 2002, the 2nd and 9th of January 2023 have been circulated to councillors. Uh, I just note that um, the weekly briefing report of the 16th, uh, though it has been distributed, this is of course an adjourned meeting from the 16th, so we'll actually acknowledge that weekly briefing report at our next council meeting. Was that your point, Councillor Jones? No, no. Was, no. Oh, please. The, yes, thanks. Uh, I refer council to the 19th of December and on page 11, uh, Victoria Esplanade and Queen Street Master Plan. And I note, Mr Mayor, that um, the uh, authoress, if I can say that, Miss Angela Moore, was responsible for doing a lot of the ferry parking uh, matters on the Victoria Esplanade and so on. So my question through you, perhaps to, to uh, Miss Moore, is that during the sort of um, consultation with inter interested parties, 
regarding the master plan. <coughs> was there any discussion with regard to um, how that would dovetail into the um, parking arrangements because there is still a lot of concern from residents. Whoops, Mr. Mr. That's right, Moore's just, not yeah. here. <laughs> Sorry. I can direct the question, <laughs> Councillor James. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So we threw it to Mr. Uh, Graham. Was there any uh, discussion in relation to how we're going to handle this problem which still exists on the Victoria Esplanade and also in Queen Street as for parking and also how it's going to be addressed in the master plan. Uh, Mr Graham. Uh, through you, Mr, uh, Mr Mayor, um, the, the memo indicates that we're going to a community consultation with the, the draft Victoria Esplanade master plan. Um, so this is us informing council of a copy of it and we'll be coming to a February council meeting to then consult with the community, which I'm sure parking will be a part of the, um, one of the aspects that the, the community will want um, discussion on. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Grant. Another question. Well, Councillor James. Thank you. In relation to the 2nd of January, uh, on page 6-7, there are a number of delegations that have been highlighted and they are application DAs and subdivisions approved under delegation authority, delegated authority. Could the um, manager city planning advise council as to whether or not there was only one representer in relation to this and or were there any other circumstances that required the officers to exercise the delegation under the Act. Mr Lovell. Uh, through Mr Mayor, uh, of those applications referred to on page six and seven, none of those would have involved a representation. Thank you, Mr Lovell. Councillor James, are there any other questions from colleagues in the weekly briefing reports? Uh, there being none, uh, I note now that we're at the end of our omnibus items. Can I have a mover of the omnibus motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Mulder and Seconder Deputy Mayor. Uh, I'll put, those, put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you. Moving on now to item number five, public question time. There's a question on notice from Mrs Denise Hogan. Um, uh, CEO, so, yeah, would you provide a verbal response? And uh, this response will also appear in the minutes as well. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, the, uh, we've got two questions on notice, uh, both from Denise Hogan uh, of 12A Acuna Street, Rosny. The first question is, who makes made the decision about whether or not the development application for 12A Acuna Street, Rosny, which expires this January 2023, is extended? The answer is follows. The delegated officer in the city planning department makes the decision, as is the case with any permit extension request council receives. The second question was, when will the matter of a sublease be discussed in open council if the development application is extended? The answer is, council officers are currently negotiating the terms of a draft sublease for council consideration. It is not possible to put an exact time frame on these negotiations, but it is hoped Council will have something formal to consider in the first quarter of 2023. Uh, thank you, Mr Pask. Um, there are no uh, um, answers to previous questions taken on notice. We now move to questions without notice. Are there, are there any questions from the gallery? Uh, we'll have Mr Fig first, then, then you, Mr Marsh. Um, We don't see what the amendments are and you talked about a, a letter that's in there that we don't see so just to make things a little bit better for us to understand if we can either have in the minutes or uh, provided if you've got motion changes in the agenda for us up here would be great or even on the screen that would be a great improvement for us and possibly the people watching online so we can understand things a little bit better uh, thank you for that mr mayor uh, 
I didn't know two of the aldermen were going to raise Mac Point in the cricket, but I had one question here that concerns me from the point, I'm not a cricket follower, but I like a, a good six when I see it. Um, Mac Point, as part of their business plan, have stated that 118,000 people are going to be watching the cricket in their venue. I'd like to know how that is going to affect the council and Bell Reeve, and has it been budgeted for, that loss of uh, games there? And if so, is it in the budget or will it be in the budget and we'll be informed on how that uh, financial, either positive or negative, will be dealt with? Thank you, Mr Figalas, is the Chief Executive Officer to... Yeah, I might uh, give that one to the Chief Financial Officer if you've got anything to add at this point. Um, through you, Mr Mayor, nothing's been budgeted as yet. It's, the, the, it's still continuing with um, the buyback of those properties. So, yeah, we don't know as yet. So we haven't built anything into the budget as yet. Thank you, Ms Morrill. And noting too, Mr Vickers, it is very early days. Um, with uh, regards to major yeah, state... The only reason I ask yeah. this is we're looking at... Uh, reports from the other side of the river from 21 and 22 and it concerns us. So I'd like to see something relating to how we feel about it or what the ramifications are if it goes ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Fick. Uh, Mr Marsh? Um, I have two questions. Um, the residents of Bell Reeve have had enough of the false alarm that goes off at Blunston Arena at any old time of day or night for up to half an hour at a time, blaring all over Bill Reeve, saying, this is an emergency, evacuate now. Boop, boop, boop. This has been going on for now nearly 10 years. After a recent Big Bash match, the alarm went off, as it does. The fire brigade rocked up, as they do turned off the alarm, and by the time they got back to the station, the alarm went off again. It's very comforting to know, though, that the alarm doesn't go off during an event. My question, when are the Clarence City Council, as the landlord, going to do something about the noise nuisance? Just can't keep pretending that this doesn't happen, is not happening. Chief Executive Officer. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. We'll need to take that one on notice. Mm -hmm. As they say in America, you can't make this up. At the 9th of the 2nd, 2021 live stream council meeting, during a discussion about the contentious issue of the Kangaroo Bay Hotel and Hospitality School proposal, at precisely three hours, 29 minutes, four seconds into the meeting, Alderman Brendan Blomley stood up in this chamber and said, Mr Mayor, uh, in tactics reminiscent of Nazi Germany's Joseph Goebbels, those opposed to the $8 million Kangaroo Bay Hospitality School have elevated it before being interrupted by the chairman. He later... Mr Marsh, I'm going to, Mr. Marsh, I'm going to interrupt you now. That, that, that's an improper question. That's my ruling. Please take a seat. No, Please, no, no, Mr Marsh. I haven't asked my question yet. But, but I've made a ruling. Oh. It, you're actually impugning the chair. You're making uh, offensive remarks... No, I'm and, just, I'm just and if it's about. Mr. Marsh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to debate with you. Please take your seat. I need to ask my question. Mr. Marsh, you do not need to take. I've made a ruling. Please take your seat. Well, I'm not to well, well, I will adjourn the meeting and I'll call the police. You will take your seat, Mr. Marsh. I'll wait. Wait for the police to turn up. I need to ask my question. Mr. Marsh. People, need to know what's going on here. Mr. Marsh. This, as you know, there are three notices of motion regarding Kangaroo Bay development tonight. It's got nothing to do with what's, what's being discussed tonight. This is a historic event. But Mr Marsh, I've, I've made, I've, Mr Marsh, I've made a ruling. Please take your seat or you will be, you will be removed. Please take your seat, Mr Marsh. All right, well, um, it's a, I'm a, during this meeting, um, Mr Marsh, we will call the police. You will be removed. Uh, colleagues, we're taking a five minute recess. So, yeah, please call the police.
has to be told? Please, colleagues, call this uh, meeting back to, to order again. Uh, are there any other questions without notice from the gallery? <laughs> there, there being none, we move on now to item number six, deputations by members of the public. I understand that uh, we have one deputation this evening, uh, uh, General Manager, uh, Chief Executive Officer. Uh, we have uh, one deputation tonight uh, from Miss Kim Goods regarding the Shambroad Community Engagement. Miss Goods, thank you. And uh, just to uh, point out, it's three minutes. It's a hard three minutes, but uh, I'm sure you'll have no trouble with that time limit. So thank you. The floor is yours. I 
appointed by Shambroad to undertake community engagement around the Kangaroo Bay Hotel concept designs. Um, we've already commenced some discussions with local businesses and I've started to door knock some of the houses in the closer area and we'll continue that in the next couple of weeks. We've got, as we've provided in a printout tonight, uh, quite a in comprehensive engagement strategy. Um, this includes the uh, engagement platform which is going live tomorrow and that will give residents the opportunity to access information. It will also provide them with opportunities to have online engagement. We also understand that for some residents online is not possible so they can call us on a designated phone number and we'll help them to register and have their feedback and there are a range of forums um, planned for the week beginning the 6th of February. This includes walk-in sessions, it includes forums specifically for Cambridge Road residents, uh, local businesses in the Belray Village as well as the broader population of the Clarence um, City area. Um, a final report will be compiled of the feedback. That will be provided to architects, which will then be actioned. Um, feedback will then be provided to the community who have had their um, input up until that point. Um, so I just thought it would be good to be able to give you a quick overview this evening of what that consultation process will look like. Thank That's you. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, moving now on to uh, item number seven, which is planning authority matters. And, uh, there's no need for us this evening to move in to the, as a planning authority because a development application at 1 Gordon Street, Richmond for an outbuilding um, has been dealt with under delegation. But I'll call for the Acting CEO to provide an update, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, I need to advise that after the adjournment of the meeting last week, we sought an extension of time from the applicant because the 42-day statutory clock to decide the matter was due to run out on Wednesday the 18th of January. This request for an extension of time was refused by the applicant. As, as a result, an authorised officer has approved the application under delegation in accordance <laughs> with the recommendations in the report in order to avoid defaulting the application. This is because it would otherwise have been decided outside the 42-day application period. Mr Mayor, can I recommend to you that you seek a procedural motion to note that item 7.1 in tonight's agenda has been approved under delegation? Chief Executive Officer, thank you. Uh, I call then for a procedural motion to note that item 7.1 in the agenda has been dealt with under delegation. Moved by Councillor Hume, thank you. Seconded by Councillor uh, Chong, thank you very much. Uh, being a procedural motion, there's no debate. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Against? Thank you. All right, moving now. Uh, can I ask a question, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, that's not appropriate, Councillor James. I'm sorry, please take your seat. No, no, whether we advised in writing that the uh, applicant Well, not. Councillor James, there's an opportunity to ask questions later in the meeting, as you're aware, so we'll leave it then, thanks. We'll just stick to the agenda. Moving now on to reports of officers. There's um, nothing until we get down to 8.4.1 under governance. Shambord requests for buyback extension of time. I'll call for a mover of the... Uh, of the recommendation. Councillor Mulder, thank you. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Hunter. Councillor Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Um, using the escape clause, um, we, we, we've, got, we've got to hear with this development without prejudice, Mr. Mayor. Shambroad Overseas Investment seeks an extension of line relating to the buyback provisions of the sale and development agreement for the purpose of enabling community consultation on its modified proposal. This is a legal, not a political decision. It relates, to, it relates to actions required by a contract. Contract law is based on two premises. One, there is a meeting of the minds, and, and two, that uh, there, um, there's a meeting and shared objectives, and that all parties will act in good faith to, obtain, to achieve those objectives. Mr Mayor, this contract is dead. Dead because the modified proposal does not meet the twin objectives of both a hospitality school and a hotel. This project hit troubled times before the pandemic. Nor do I believe that Shambrill have acted in good faith since the withdrawal of UTAS. In 2019, when UTAS made it clear they would be unable to commit for another 20 years, Shambrill were confident in obtaining another provider and council granted the extension on conditions initially agreed by Shambrill. Having in good faith granted that conditional extension, within two weeks, under threat of legal action, 
Council was to force to make the extension unconditional. At that point, the writing was on the wall. There was no hospitality school provider, a nil prospect of one emerging. And that became evident in October the 21st when Shambroad came back to Council with a totally non-compliant proposal. Council's rejection of that proposal was probably the genesis of what we see today. Or maybe it was planned there all along. And what guarantee do we have that the hotel development will not later be converted to luxury apartments, which seem to be the only commercial viable development for the area? Perhaps its future lies in non-commercial use. Shambwood were not acting in good faith when they ambushed council with this latest proposal on the eve of an election. It is not in good faith to bind council to consider a non-compliant modified proposal as a condition of avoiding an ambush. It is not acting in good faith on the eve of the December meeting to ask councillors to consider a vague concept embargoed to the hour of the meeting to avoid councillors consulting with the community we represent. Neither is it good faith, acting in good faith, to want more time to consult on a conceptual project that is little more than a site plan and an artist's drawing. In November, I asked for details as to the heights of buildings and impacts on fuel lines. When I asked this last week, despite two months elapsing, still none were available. It is not acting in good faith to be so secretive. Secretive by wanting all considerations made in closed meetings without public scrutiny. Secretive in refusing Council's request to public release the SDA when the main elements of that contract were already in the public domain. Secretive in hiding from Council the true position in regard to the hospitality school and hotel operators but it is acting in good faith to refuse any more time, any more consultation time for a project, for a proposal that was long in the formulation, light on in detail, kept secret to the 12th hour and does not conform to the sale and development agreement it purports to modify. Thank you, Councillor Mulder. Councillor Hunter. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Being a newly elected member I came to this process with an open mind with Shamrod. I was open to anything, you know, completely fresh. And that's why we made that decision at the last council meeting, which I was really happy with. So I can't believe that now Shamrod is coming back and asking for a further extension on the consultation that plan that they released that evening, when they know fully well the timelines. Now, I'm extremely impressed that you've got Kim Goods on board, and I have a lot of respect for you, Kim. So I'm really curious of how you're going to pull it together by March, if that's how we vote tonight. Thank you, Councillor Hunter. Any other colleagues? Councillor Hume. Yeah, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. I mean, uh, first of all, the, the question of whether... Um, I, I'm, I'm going to support the motion, um, but the question of whether um, this is in keeping with the sale and development agreement, um, this is actually seeking a, a, an amendment um, to that agreement. Um, so, you know, when it comes to contract law, if both co's agree, you can amend, amend a contract, and that's what I understand Chamberlain's seeking to do. Um, but my, my reasoning for supporting the motion, I, I think, is somewhat different to uh, Councillor Mulder's in that I note in 2.12, uh, within the context of any... So this is 2.12 in the officer's report. Within the context of any decision regarding council's exercise of the buyback option, stages one to six should provide council with a sufficient basis on which to decide whether to exercise the buyback option and whether an extension of the buyback period to complete consultation is warranted as a first step in that process. So what I'm noting there is that it doesn't rule out the possibility of an extension for further consultation if we believe it's warranted. And I have, I still have an open mind as to whether that's the case. Thank you, Councillor Hume. Uh, Councillor Warren. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Since 2018, when I was first elected to Council, I have consistently voted against every request for an extension, uh, and that includes before the pandemic, during the pandemic and since the pandemic, and I will continue to be consistent tonight. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Uh, Councillor Chong? Oh, sorry. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You, and, and maybe a question 
to the general manager through you. Um, can I ask, I understand what this is about, but can I ask why point A is necessary in this recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Uh, Chief Executive Officer. question. Uh, I think it's important just simply to note what it is that we are receiving in the form of the request. Uh, I think we've had previous discussions uh, in chambers that relate to uh, certainly community members being able to access and understand the decisions that are made in the chamber. So I think point A is to succinctly uh, um, summarise the decision uh, that council or the, the information that was received from council on which it made its decision. Thank you, Chief Executive Officer. Councillor Kennedy? Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Councillor James? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to just demonstrate what the concept plan is in relation to what Sham Broad are proposing as part of their Bay Developer Springs change. And that is the new, well, that is the concept plan that is being proposed as part of the modified agreement. Since 2016, when I was in formal discussions, I have advocated that the proposal that had been considered under the Sale and Development Agreement was too big, it was out of, kil out of kilter with the amenity of the area, and I have been consistent. Even in 2017, Mr Mayor, when this matter was brought to Council, and I was the only one who voted against it. I have been consistent all the way through because it's too big. It's out of kilter and it's not in keeping with the amenity of the area. This concept plan, although we haven't got details of it yet, is out of kilter. It's just too big and it just detracts from the whole of the area and that is what is really all part and parcel. In the officer's report on the 19th of December, council amended the planning scheme, I quote, to reflect the direction of the site to facilitate activities such as tourism, civic <laughs> and marine developments, including visitor accommodation, food services, shops, but limited to tourism and marine related and marina civic centre and function centre. So there is an opportunity for us to buy this back and then we can open up to the public and already in the election campaign, we had two candidates who came out publicly and said it's got to be back in the public ownership. And that was on the election campaign of two of those persons who have been successfully elected to this chamber. This particular motion that's before the chair does nothing other than to give them another extension of time if they believe that the consultation process hasn't delivered on what they believe should be delivered. So part A, I note, and remember, when we have used the word notes, it has basically locked us into some sort of <laughs> deliberation on some interim uh, concept plan, and that has ba basically been locked in, as, as some would say, to by the very nature of used word notes. So I will not support part A, because it again has that connotation of saying that we have actually uh, listened and are looking at an extension of time for the sale and development agreement by that. The other point about part B is in fact that refuses the request for an extension of time dated the 5th of January 2023, full stop. If that had been there, I would have supported it all the way. But it goes on and throws a lifeline to Shambroad and says, and requests that Shambroad present its initial consultation findings and refinements to its concept design. That's the concept design, that. That's what they're gonna promote in the community. And we, at the time, believe it's inappropriate because they didn't make substantial commencement in the original sale and development agreement. And furthermore, after which time, council may consider whether an extension of time or further ex consultation has merit. It's giving them another opportunity. How many times do we have to bring this up? People have had enough. Enough is enough. Let's say no, let's scrap this motion, and we don't have to do anything about it. We don't have to note it. We don't have to put a rider in there to give them a, a leg up in relation to consultation. And also, if we're going to include C, well, that can be said. If 
uh, Alderman um, Creation, uh, Councillor um, Ritchie's motion gets up. She quite rightfully put the word land in there. All of a sudden, under C, we've got hotel in there. So really, the consultation under Part C is to do with a, a hotel development on the site. Now, do we want a hotel? According to a number of people around this chamber, we want to buy it back. We want to pay the 2.44 million plus GST plus plus and such and such, and then get it into partnership into, into public ownership hands. Part C doesn't do that. It basically locks in place a Kangaroo Bay hotel as part of the consultation process. I will be voting against A, B and C. Thank you, Councillor James. And there's a lot of latitude given to you then by the Chair, um, use of props, etc., but also seeking to uh, represent the views of colleagues. Colleagues are quite capable of representing their own views in this place. No so names, just, no... I just ask you, please, to keep in mind Mr Healy's letter circulated today. Absolutely. I was very conscious of that. And thank you very much for sending us away, a Councillor James, of dealing with colleagues and, and, and all members of our community. Thank you. Are there any other members, uh, colleagues wishing to speak on this item? There being none, Councillor Mulder, your right of reply, please. Um, just a couple of things. Um, um, Councillor Hume is, um, is, uh, is quite right. It's available to any councillor and um, at any time to move motions, to change, vary or extend something that we've agreed before. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that right exists, and it is actually that right is considered in here. I think it's important to note that the, um, the buy it back is something that um, we will be debating shortly. It's not what we're debating now. What, what, what is being debated is an extension of time to exercise that option. The buyback itself will be debated in the next few motions. The modified proposal, which also got a run in this, um, in the uh, fairly broad-ranging contribution of Councillor James, uh, will probably be demanded in March, unless we agree that we want a bit more time, um, and that will debate will occur then. Now, whether we want a hotel is something that we will be putting to the community and debating in Councillor Warren's motion. So I'm not too sure um, why the... Um, objection to this particular vote is because I think there may be a case of misunderstanding what this particular motion is actually trying to achieve. And it's setting the scene, to sum it up, it's setting the scene for um, not granting an extension because in the words of the developer themselves, uh, we need to either, let's get, let either get on with building it or get on with whatever we want to do next. Thank you, Councillor Mulder. I'll put the, the, the motion uh, as moved by Councillor Mulder, seconded by Councillor Hunter. All those in favour? As against? Thank you. Uh, that's uh, so passed. Moving now on to motions on notice. Uh, motion 9.1, notice for motion from Count the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Risk Ritchie, Kangaroo Bay land buyback, Shambroad site, and an amendment motion has been circulated. Um, I ask you to move your motion, Councillor Ritchie. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I move the motion standing in my name. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Goyne, thank you. Councillor Ritchie. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. And um, I rise to move the amended motion standing in my name and I thank Councillor Goyne for her support in seconding the amended motion. And I also extend my appreciation to those councillors who provided feedback to me uh, following the circulation of the original motion um, was much appreciated and I think that collaborative approach uh, assists to end up with um, a better outcome uh, at the end of that process, so thank you. Um, the issue of the development uh, of land at Kangaroo Bay and in particular the sale and development agreement, SDA, <laughs> between Shambroad and Council has a significant history and that has been detailed in previous council reports and well documented to the point where I do not need and have no intention of revisiting all the historical details because um, I'm sure we're all across those. In terms of the current situation, uh, the amended motion before council is consistent with and a natural progression from the motion passed by council on 19th of December 2022, which, as we all know, rejected the modified development proposal and request for a further time extension put forward by Shambroad at that time. 
The amended motion is also consistent with the decision that Council has just made this evening not to grant a request from Shambroad, dated 5th of January this year, seeking an extension to the SDA buyback option timeframe to allow further time for community consultation following the aforementioned refusals passed by Council on the 19th of December. The refusal, refusal decisions um, I have just mentioned were based on having full regard to the evidence, legal advice and submissions placed before Council, including the opportunity for Shambroad uh, to put forward its case in respect to those matters, and the same can be said in relation to the motion before you now. Support for this motion enlivens the buyback process in a fair and equitable manner and ensures that council staff are appropriately empowered and directed to act in respect to the terms of the SDA and pre-authorising the CEO provides greater certainty of council's position and presents everyone with the best opportunity in working up to the buyback date of 12th of April 2023. And while I think it's fair to say that it is clear that any timely progression of the development under the SDA has not been achieved and that it is unarguable that Shambroad have had more than ample time to have addressed the issue relating to the proposed hospitality training school, the amended motion does recognise Shambroad's written undertaking to, public, undertaking to publicly consult and resubmit a modified development proposal by 6th of March 2023 without providing any further time extensions for Shambroad. Should the buyback take place in accordance with this amended motion, it recognises the expectation for Council to reconsult with the local community in relation to the Kangaroo Bay Urban Design Strategy and Concept Plan. And I want to be clear that it's, I feel it's very much in the public interest and in keeping with community expectation that any future consultation be unconstrained and should be as fulsome as required in order to enable Council to make the best decision in the future for the use of this very special place in our city. It deserves nothing less for an area that has been quite rightly described as the jewel in the crown of Clarence by our own Mayor. And I want to place on record my understanding and sensitivity to just how difficult and stressful this entire saga has been for many people in our community, people who care deeply about where they live and people who care about Kangaroo Bay more broadly, regardless of whether they live in that area or not. Please be assured that you've been heard and I understand that so many people are keen to see a conclusion to this matter. This motion starts the stopwatch running on achieving an outcome and it does so in a way that respects the parameters of our legal and contractual obligations. In closing, I want to be very clear that what we are dealing with primarily here tonight relates to contract law and Council has rightly directed its regard only to those matters directly germane to the subject matter of the contract. We have been careful to demonstrate substantial cause supported by identifiable and objective reasoning in order to ensure Council is well placed not only to exercise options but to defend those decisions it makes here tonight and into the future. So it's on that basis that I seek the support um, of my fellow councillors for the amended motion. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councillor Goyne. Um, firstly, I wanted to thank the Deputy Mayor for bringing forth this notice of motion this evening and also the CEO, the, the acting CEO, and his team for all their careful consideration, as always. Um, but mostly I wanted to thank the community and for each and every one of you that has reached out to share your concerns. Um, I just wanted to assure you that we are listening um, and that whilst this has been a very long and drawn out matter, we are a newly formed council and I beg of you to extend the patience for just a little while longer, as the Deputy Mayor mentioned, um, while we meet our contractual obligations, um, so that we can navigate this very important issue for our community. Um, the one thing I beg is that you all continue to speak and ensure that your voices are heard throughout the consultation processes, because we are listening and we are here to serve. Thank you, Councillor Gawain. If I could just ask to remind colleagues to direct uh, comments through the chair as well. So thank you very much. Uh, anyone else like to make a contribution to this? Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I just refer Council to um, 
uh, the officer's report on the 19th of December 2022, in which it states that while, uh, yes, council amended its planning scheme to reflect the direction for the site to facilitate activities as tourism, civic and marine developments, as well as visitor accommodation and food services. Also, the council officers referred to the fact on page 67, the revised design which requires consultation and refinement as part of the pre-development uh, application process is considered more integrated from the community perspective than the previous proposal. Also in their report, they say, while hotels are being built in the Hobart CBD to add to existing hotel accommodation stock, in Clarence there are none. And on page 68, they go through putting up a case as to why we need to have a hotel on that site at Kangaroo Bay. This particular proposal <coughs> uh, has been obviously raised on a number of occasions. And in this particular motion that's before the chair, there's a number of concerns that I've already alluded to in relation to where this is going to go. It is not saying that we should buy it back now. That is not what's in this motion. What's in the motion is that we are going to suggest, and in the motion it is saying, that Shamrod undertake a consultation process and that they need to meet certain timelines in relation to this. And that's a fairly involved process and Council has agreed to that rather than say no extensions, nothing more to be said in relation to that. Shambroad in his letter to us on the 5th of January stated, we accept that credible community engagement process is important to council, councillors, Shambroad Australia and the ratepayers of Clarence. So as the, uh, to address council's reason for not accepting the modified development proposal, we will engage. So we haven't accepted the modified proposal. That is this, as I've shown you previously. And also this particular motion, it's going ahead and saying that they're going to give them, we're going to give them extra time in order to be able to um, consult with the public. Enough has been done in that regard. We have done enough. Over the last six years, there's been consultation. We've received different uh, communications from many people and they all said, buy it back. This particular motion is throwing a lifeline to them. And I don't agree with it. And so that's OK. That's the way I'll vote on this particular case, as I have the right to do so. But we don't want to drag this process out. And this is what it's doing. It's dragging the process out. And at the end of the day, close to March, what will we have? Another request for an extension of time because their particular process didn't meet their timelines and therefore they are... <coughs> they will request an extension of time. My motion says, buy it back now. But this motion says, no, throw them a lifeline, allow them to continue to <laughs> consult, and then we may consider that the modified concept plan is appropriate and approve it. And that's the end of the buyback. There's no, <laughs> no moving from that point. And once we say an extension of time again, or allow the statutory process of a DA to continue, then oh, we've lost it. And that is what is wrong with this motion, and I will not support it. Thank you, Councillor James. Uh, Councillor Hume. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I disagree with my colleague, Councillor James. I do believe we need to keep the option of um, Shambrell's modified proposal open and give them the opportunity to consult on it. Because who knows, it may, be, um, it may be the best proposal for the site and it may be the best deal that we're going to get. It may be. I'm not saying necessarily that it is. But, but the, option is, the option is open, the option is there. Uh, and you know, if, if we exercise the buyback of the land immediately, we're cutting, we're cutting off one option when you know, we should have the ability, at least some time to consider it and consider the merits of it and also to give the public the opportunity to do so. Um, and that's, that's why I'm supporting uh, Councillor Ritchie's motion. 
Um, now, this is a this is a proposal, and look, there there is a possibility we may there may be a better proposal for the site. There is a possibility that, uh, I mean, we we still don't know what the process is necessarily going to be. Um, should we choose to exercise the buyback and 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 entertain an alternative proposal for the site? But what I would say um, the Shambrell proposal has going for it is it's something that has uh, that they're going to invest significant capital in. That's going to have significant benefits in terms of uh, construction jobs and ongoing jobs, uh, and that also provides a degree of uh, public amenity in terms of um, you know the publicly accessible lawn area um, that you know would potentially with the uh, bars and restaurants provide some nightlife at the site. So. It does have merit. It may not end up being the proposal that we, we eventually go with, but given that it has merit, we should at least, for the sake of not, not because we owe anything to Shambroad necessarily, but for the sake of the residents and ratepayers who will benefit from who are to benefit from whatever we do on this site, at least keep the option open and entertain the proposal and give Shambroad the opportunity to consult the community on it. Thank you, Councillor Hume. Councillor Mulder. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Once again, my contribution is without prejudice. This is not the buyback itself. This is only an instruction to commence that process. If you like, it's the beginning of the end with no guarantee that that end will transpire. The actual buyback will be voted around March after consideration of public consultation on the modified proposal. As much as I agree with Councillor James's motion to just buy it back now, the circumstances around the standstill agreement, circumstances that were forced on us by the pre-election ambush, means that we must give due consideration to the modified proposals. And we have publicly committed to doing so. This motion does not commit any councillor to vote for the land buyback in March irrespective of how they voted tonight or what they said in the recent elections. Thank goodness for elections. Seems that's the only time some people reflect the community's wishes. Indeed, there is no guarantee that those who backflipped on the eve of the election will not do so again tonight or in March. But there are some credibility issues. If elected, we will move to buy it back, they said. No ifs, no buts. I would never have signed the deal, they said. If we see a double backflip now or in March, then a massive fraud will have been perpetrated on the voters of Clarence, and I would argue that resignation should flow. However, as we move towards that great day in March, there should be acknowledgement that some of us might have been right all along. Some humility, some apologies are in order. Apologies for the mocking and the name calling of community members. Remember the anti-everything brigade? Remember the NIMBY line? Remember the accusations of bullying and misleading when the community physically gathered 2,000 signatures to a paper petition in 10 days? And how about some apologies to members of this and previous councils who were accused of lobbying for a fabled buyback clause that turns out to be much less fabled than the hospitality school? Remember that don't let the facts get in the road of the good story jibes and denigrating the truth as fake news. And apologies to the denigration and mocking in the press, in this chamber and in workshops. Apologies for accusing fellow councillors of spreading misinformation, misleading information and misinformation without any evidence of what that misinformation was, except it didn't suit the agenda. Apologies for likening fellow councillors, and I'm reading this, contributions to Dr Goebel's Nazi propaganda machine. Yes, that reference was made in this place. It was withdrawn, but no apology ever issued. But let's get on with it, Mr Mayor. Let's get on with, with keeping your election commitment to buy it back. We start that tonight. Thank you, Councillor Mulder. Is there anyone else that would like to make a contribution? Councillor Warren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. An, an interesting night. Um, we have three motions before us. There's a little bit of overlap between them. Um, I. I don't actually see it as being inconsistent to support all three. The order is a bit problematic. I think if um, Councillor James' motion had been first, that would have um, been a clearer indication of 
how we proceed. And as uh, Councillor Mulder has pointed out, this um, puts in place the possibility of a buyback. It doesn't actually initiate it right now. Um, I too am uncomfortable with anything that could be taken as support for Shambroad um, pursuing an alternative proposal. Um, because I think we do need to clarify, first and foremost, what we want to do with the current contract, um, which has run its course and needs to be terminated, uh, before we decide whether we want a different proposal, whether we want a different form of ownership. Um, so I, I will support this motion, but I will probably also support Councillor James's motion when that comes around. Um, because the end is the same. We're heading towards buyback, and that's something I've been consistent in all the way through um, and from the beginning that uh, this proposal was not appropriate, um, did not meet community expectations, and we can do better. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Any other contributions to be made by colleague? Councillor Darker, thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, and thank you, Councillor Ritchie, for engaging with us on this. Um, so I'm supporting the original buyback timeline because as a member of the Tasmanian Greens who have democratic representative democracy as one of our pillars, I believe that the more community engagement, the more feedback from the community we have, the better. And I believe that when Shambord engage in the community consultation they've laid out tonight, that because of how they've acted in bad faith, because of how they've been secretive, because of how they've been disrespectful, that they will be met with a thorough rejection by the people of Clarence. I believe they have a snowball's chance in hell of actually getting a positive reception from the people of Clarence, but let's see if they pull off a miracle. Um, so my belief is that in supporting this motion, we're setting the ball rolling and we will be moving for buyback in March or April with the community's response on the record to strengthen our position. Thanks, Councillor Darker. I'll just mention again too, please, and, um, it is difficult, I know, to, to not want to turn around and address the gallery, but please, um, all comments via the chair and looking this way, please. Uh, but thank you for your contribution. Um, are there any other con contributions from colleagues wish to be made? Uh, Councillor Kennedy? Uh, thank you. All right, then. Uh, that being the case, we... Um, to the Deputy Mayor for the right of reply. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the contributions of uh, all my colleagues here uh, this evening and indeed respect all of the positions that people take and also uh, completely understand and appreciate that many people have consistently held a view over a very long time in this place uh, predating my time in this, in, this, in this council chamber. So I completely respect those positions. I don't necessarily agree with all of the points made, um, and that's okay. I don't have to, we don't have to agree to like one another, that's okay. Um, I think I want to be clear that this motion isn't providing an extension of time to Sham Broad. It's not doing anything that provides extensions that were not approved at the 19th of December meeting. It's not providing anything additional from what was rejected at that point. I just want to be clear, because there seemed to be some suggestion that there was somehow an extension being provided in this motion. That's certainly not the case. This motion uh, is about getting the ball rolling for the buyback. It is about saying the buyback should proceed. If council doesn't say otherwise at the, at the March meeting, that's essentially what this motion does. Now, it also puts council, in my view, uh, in the very best position that we can have the strongest legal position moving forward on this matter come March. This is a motion that sets in, in train a series of events uh, that are outlined in the points that you can see in the motion before you. And I think, <coughs> and in the absence of any alternative, that might come forward, and it's been touched on around consultation opportunities leading right up into March. All of those things are highly valid points. I'm very comfortable with all of those. I'm very comfortable with the way I think the council will manage that leading into the March meeting. And um, I also, um, colleagues will also appreciate that those of us, and particularly those people who are new to council, have inherited 
um, this situation, a, 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 you know, a highly contentious legal situation, and we've been very carefully working our way to pick through all of that high-level legal advice, of which is very frustrating that cannot be shared uh, for obvious reasons. Um, but you know, make no mistake, we've been very assiduously working through that to do the best job we can on behalf of the citizens of Clarence to put our council in the best position we can uh, come the March meeting. So uh, I thank councillors for their contributions um, and uh, appreciate the support. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'll uh, put the motion. Uh, all those in favour? Against? So carried. Moving now on to notice for motion uh, 9.2 from Councillor Warren, Kangaroo Bay Wharf Site Consultation. We'll move that motion, Councillor Warren. Thank you. Uh, is there a seconder? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Uh, you did beat Councillor Mulder then, so seconder. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Um, thank you. Councillor Chong. Um, look, I was elected in 2018 and again in 2022 on a platform of listening to the people and consulting with people. So it was quite disappointing in a workshop recently, or a briefing, I can't remember which, where I said, why don't we just ask the people what they want to do? And there was, there was some general derision around the table and people saying that's a stupid idea which always gets my back up. So here we are doing it regardless of what those people thought and, and suggested. Um, you know, there was a bit of, we're elected to make the decisions, we don't have to ask the people what they think. And I don't agree with that. So this is winding things back a little bit <coughs> because the consultation that Shambroad may be undertaking now is to do with the proposal. This is winding it back to 2008 and saying, is this what the community wants for this area? Is it what we signed up for? Because ever since I've been involved in campaigning for Clarence, people have been telling me that what they envisaged for this area is nothing like what was turned up in the first um, and second and the third proposal. So it was a much lower scale, more community space, and people were really happy with that. Um, and then what they got did not reflect what they believed that they had agreed to, hence some of the problems. So the, this motion says, let's just give people the chance to give us some really basic feedback. And this also came from people saying, they're supposed to be comp consulting, no one's consulted with me, I haven't heard anything. And giving people a chance to feel heard. Um, so the first part is, do you actually support a boutique hotel development in Kangaroo Bay, yes or no? And that wording is because that was the original concept in 2008, was a boutique hotel, not a huge monolithic um, hotel with a um, hospitality school attached. We're also giving a chance for people to explain their reasoning and provide other information, so it's not just a straight yes, no. And, and then the second part is, do you support a buyback? Yes, no, and if so, why and why not? And uh, what else might this area be used for? So it's a very simple questionnaire. Um, again, I, I acknowledge that not everybody has digital access. This will be through our Your Say platform, which um, I am pleased to have seen develop over the last four years. Um, we didn't have anything like that when I was first elected. So I think that is getting some traction. I recognise that not everybody will have a chance to be involved in this. So it's not to be seen as a referendum where we have to follow the result, but it will give us more information and it will give us a, how the people out there are feeling on the issue of the buyback and the hotel, which is not what the um, Shambord consultation does. That's looking at a particular proposal and how people feel about that particular proposal. So I do encourage colleagues to support further consultation because why wouldn't you? You give me a very good reason why you don't want to consult with the people we represent. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Councillor Kennedy. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you to Councillor Warren for the, the motion. Um, again, right from when I was first elected, community engagement has been what I've been about. Um, can't get enough of it. I just encourage people in the wider community to actually have their say as well, right into the far corners of our community. Please have your say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Hunter. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm really keen to support this motion. 
I don't necessarily agree, as I'm sure a number of my colleagues, that it is going to capture the wider community. But what I like about it is I hope that, like myself, many of my colleagues will be out doing our own consultation and speaking to people. And this gives us an avenue for people to go to, to lodge their thoughts. So I highly encourage all of my colleagues to do that um, because we do need as much information as possible. A lot of people won't go to the Your Say site, they won't engage, but we can help encourage them and help them get there. Thank you, Councillor Hunter. Councillor Goyne. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not used to directing through you. Um, thank you, Councillor Warren. I just wanted to say that I agree with Councillor Hunter and just to make sure that the community is aware that when approaching us, we can help them through the USA process if they can't navigate computers. Um, I just wanted to point out that I'm not sure if I just wasn't privy with the conversations at workshops, but I have not heard anyone mention that they didn't think community consultation was a good idea, and I think the more feedback we can get, the better. And I think, without speaking for everyone, we would all agree with that, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Goyne. Councillor Hume. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, look, after much consideration, I will be supporting Councillor Warren's motion, um, but I, I do so with, a, with a, I suppose, a caution and a caveat that uh, we need to we need to understand um, not just well, not just ask the community what their view is, but we need to understand in interpreting the results that, as Councillor Warren herself said, this is not a referendum. Um, that if, if that if the results come out, you know, the quantity of the results come out with a, a certain result one way or another on either or both questions, that it's not necessarily a representative sample. Um, I agree with I agree with the consultation because uh, you know we we need a process for asking the community what they think more generally about the site um, rather than just on uh, Shambrell's motion because uh, on Shambrell's proposal because at some point uh, if we do decide to eventually exercise the buyback if we if we don't go with that proposal then at the moment we don't really have a a process for how we're going to consider what happens with that site. So, so that will ha help to inform that process should that process eventually um, take place. But uh, yeah, we, we need to understand that the responses that come back will only be representative of the people who choose to participate in that. And I'm hoping that as many people as possible, regardless of their views, um, choose to participate in this, given the, the significance of this site for the whole city of Clarence. Um, you know, not just those who, who might have a particular view. But, but I think we need to understand that uh, the, you know, the results are not necessarily um, representative of the entire community, and also to the degree that there are, there are a number of other considerations that will go into the decisions that we have to make in the future. Uh, in terms of, um, for example, you know, where people give their views on what else they should be considered for that site, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that what they put forward will be um, practical or feasible or, or that anyone will be able to uh, necessarily deliver on it. So, you know, we need, to, we need to take into consideration that this is just one part, uh, one aspect of the... Um, the data, the, the inputs, the information that will go into our decision making about this site. Thank you, Councillor Hume. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, I rise to support the motion. Um, I think you can see from the comments that have been made and the uh, Chief Executive Officer's comments and indeed Councillor Warren's own comments that the expectation hasn't been that this is going to be a be, be all and end all. It, fully appreciate that it's not a completely representative sample. Um, I don't think that Councillor Warren has in any way tried to sell it as such. Um, she's been quite clear about what the expectation is around what will hopefully fall out of this process. I actually think that as we lead into uh, the March meeting, this, the, this will be an, a, a very useful tool. It will also feed in directly, should the buyback proceed, the, the, the part D of my motion spoke about 
recons going out to reconsult with the community, it will also feed into that, whatever falls out of this particular process. So I think there is nothing to be lost and everything to be gained in garnering this information um, to be, and, and Councillor Hume was talking about how it can be used further down the track. Absolutely agree with that. So I'm happy to support the motion. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Chong and Councillor Mori will be after Councillor Chong. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Baird, and I will be supporting this motion. And I'm particularly interested, um, as several people have alluded to, in looking at the, the qualitative information that comes back, because I think that could be very useful in our March deliberations and potentially thereafter. Thank you, Councillor Chong. Councillor Mulder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, without prejudice this time. After six years of torturous argy bargy, we finally come to asking the people what they want with this important piece of valuable land. The results of this consultation are no more credible or binding than the results of the self-consultation being proposed by Shambrook. No, it's not a referendum. It's not even an elector's poll. And even if it was, elector's poll results aren't binding on this council. This is asking people for their opinion, not asking them to make the decisions that we rightly are elected to make. <coughs> so do you want a hotel there or something else? That's real consultation. Not consulting on proposed changes to the developer's proposal. Tabula rasa, so to speak. No givens, no prejudgments. What do we want to do with this land? And any opposition to this central motion calls into being the very purpose of local government and our commitment to represent the people. Asking the people whether we should buy back their land is, if the last four years of feedback is any occasion, a lay down mazair. Buying back the land does not preclude this or any other developer constructing from a hotel or other buildings on the site if that is what the people want. If the people want to buy back the land and they want some construction on there, then the land should be leased, as is proposed for Rosney Hill. It's not out of the it's not unusual. That lease should only extend to the site of any private development and not to the surrounding areas and the public access. With sale goes control. And this land is too important for the people to lose control. Public land for public purposes, it is time to ask the people. Thank you, Councillor Mulder. Councillor Darko. Thank you, Mr. Matt, and thank you, Councillor Warren, for putting this forward. And I thank Councillor Hunter for encouraging us to engage in community consultation of our own with this as a springboard. And it is my hope that this is going to be the start of a lot more community consultation about the future of this site, because the 2008 consultation was a decade and a half ago, and I'm sure the demographics of Clarence have shifted a lot in that time. I'm 32, and in 2008, I was at Rosny College. So there's a lot that's changed since then. And I would like to also thank Councillor Mulder for his contribution just now. I agree, public land in public hands. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Darko. Councillor James, do you wish to make <coughs> a contribution? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, over the years, I have worked very closely with Paul Warren, Councillor Warren, and uh, by and large, we've been on the same page, uh, with the exception of the Aboriginal flags outside there, but that's another thing. So the community consultation thing has been a, a big thing for Councillor Warren, and I might add for myself and a number of people around this chamber who have been here before and have been re-elected, I'm sure. And as a result of that, um, you can see that any consultation is appropriate. And uh, in this particular circumstance, it's going to be sponsored by council. Council will um, flag, have your say on its website, and will have those questions uh, verbatim as part A and B. But there may be some explanatory memorandum or notes that go with that. And earlier this evening, you, you heard from me when I quoted from the 19th of December's officer's report, where the officers are really uh, pushing to have a hotel on that site. It's clear 
from reading that report on the 19th of <coughs> December. So I'm not saying there's going to be any sort of mixing of words in this particular preparation of this, of this particular questionnaire to go out to the public. But at the same time, you know, we have some control, and that is the answers, sorry, on the questions. And presumably we may have the answers that may come back and say, yes, we're opposed to a, the uh, a, a, do not support a, a boutique hotel development, and uh, we uh, want to buy it back. OK. And again, it was mentioned this evening that that really has no sort of standing as far as what this council <coughs> may decide in relation to that. And Richardson's Road, we had a poll down there about that uh, um, application for the urban growth boundary and the, and the proposal, what was proposed down there. And we had a policy that was incorporated in that to listen and put out to public consultation. And we got a swag of people that said, no, we don't want to do that, it's in inappropriate development, and so on. And this council said, well, noted. Those comments were noted. And in this particular case, I believe that particular um, uh, survey that goes out will be a little bit skewed in order to be able to sort of say, yes, we need a development, and whether it's a hotel, boutique or otherwise. And also uh, the buyback, OK, the buyback may have to have some conditions because council has already allowed uh, for Sham Broad to go ahead and <laughs> they undertake their consultation and uh, follow up with a public council to consider the modified agreement and therefore allow this particular concept plan, which I've obviously identified tonight, as going ahead. So, in a nutshell, we've had enough consultation. And having me to say that in this place after nearly 30 years in here and in the community and stood for the Liberal Party and st <coughs> stand, stood for the Democrats, I must say I enjoyed that part of it. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that I just don't see why we need to go to this length. I understand where Councillor Warren is and I admire her for her role as part of the Greens umbrella, as part of consultation. Enough's enough. We don't need to go down this path. We don't need to allow um, Sham Broad to go ahead with their consultation, but that motion was passed. I voted against it and I'm glad I did. So unfortunately, I can't see the need for this. It's gonna drag the process out more and more and it could conflict with Sham Broad's survey in as much as they say, well look, we haven't really got um, our results yet, and council's running its own, so there is some difficulty here in trying to work out whether or not we should uh, uh, put forward the next stage in their, in their plan and therefore seek an extension. I believe that they will try, they will try to get another extension, and by hook or by crook, they've already spent eight million on that site, and no way known, Mr Mayor, are they prepared to let it go? And are they prepared to build a hotel? Absolutely. And it'll be through a DA. And then you've got court, you've got representation. Thank you, Councillor James. Um, thank Councillor you. Warren, right of reply. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, colleagues, for your comments. Um, if, if the process finished today with um, Councillor James's motion being successful, there wouldn't be any need for this. But if we're continuing through to April, March, whatever, um, there's no harm in doing this. And I think a, a number of colleagues have highlighted that. The, the more information we can have, the better. And I do thank Councillor Hume for identifying the limitations of a survey like this and, <coughs> uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Mulder for highlighting, as I intended to, that those are exactly the same limitations that apply to the Sham Broad consultation. You will get a lot of people choosing one way or the other. You won't necessarily get a representative sample. It can in no way be taken as a referendum. Um, it just informs us and gives us more information. And as I said at the beginning, it gives people a voice. It gives people a chance to be heard. And that's what I've been hearing, is that people want the, they want the opportunity to express their opinion. 
and not just on the proposal, but on the wider um, what we do with that parcel of land. So I do urge colleagues to support this motion and to continue to consult and get as much information as we can before we make a decision in March or April. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Uh, colleagues, I'll put the motion. Moved by Councillor Warren, uh, seconded uh, by, um, excuse me, sorry, okay. Councillor Kennedy. <laughs> uh, all those in favour? Against? So carried. Thank you. We now move to item 9.3, notice of motion, seeing in the name of Councillor James, buy back Kangaroo Bay Wharf site land. Councillor James, you moving that motion? I am, thanks. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, yes, Councillor Chong. And, and I'm puzzled. And, but my, my understanding is we've, we've effectively, in the motion that we agreed earlier, authorised the CEO to initiate the buyback process and a whole lot of other things that went with that. If we then discuss this and do this, does that, does that not conflict with the previous motion that we've already agreed to? Councillor Chong, thank you. That's a point very well made. In fact, I was waiting to see whether Councillor James actually had a seconder, <coughs> bearing that in mind, for his motion. But what I will at this stage, and thank you for raising it here, is bring to the attention of colleagues um, uh, our consolidated meeting um, procedures, our meeting rigs, discussion of resolved matter regulation 19 part two, division two, that I understand uh, the, the chief executive officer walked through with uh, Councillor James um, before our uh, adjourned meeting on the 16th. That reads in part at one, the chairperson of a meeting may only allow a matter in respect of which a decision was made earlier in the meeting to be discussed again at that meeting if A, in the opinion of the chairperson, the vote may not have accurately reflected the opinion held by the meeting due to misunderstanding of the motion or for some other reason. Or B, new information comes to hand. Or C, in the opinion of the chairperson, some vital information has been overlooked. So mindful uh, of the rules that govern us all, Councillor James, I'll give you an opportunity uh, to, to put forward why this rule uh, ought not apply to you in this situation? Just see if I've got a second to first, because uh, otherwise it wouldn't, oh. it wouldn't really be appropriate to even make a... Thank you. Well, yes. there is a second. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure there was a feeling of at least a seconder. Yes. Uh, it, yes, look, I moved this motion and basically <laughs> I have covered it in the other two motions, even in the officer's report. This is basically starting the process immediately, OK? It doesn't stop Shambroad from going ahead and putting forward their, their consultation process. They can proceed to do that, as they have indicated they will. And um, part one determines uh, to exercise a right to buy it back. And that's in accordance with the SDA. There's no problem with that and authorises the Chief Executive Office to exercise as soon as practical and prior to the 12th of April. Now, those words, as soon as practical. Point of order, uh, Councillor James, you're actually now discussing the motion. I've oh, okay. put to you the well, meeting regulations, and uh, before I rule on this, I've given you an opportunity to put forward an argument as to why this rule should not uh, um, you know, um, be, be appropriate for you in this situation, considering the, the uh, motion 9.1 of Councillor Ritchie was actually voted 11-1. There's been no new information. Uh, no vital information has been overlooked. And um, in my view, because it was extensively canvassed and discussed by colleagues, uh, the vote did accurately reflect the opinion held by colleagues just two motions ago. So uh, unless... And I'll give you an opportunity now to withdraw your motion well, then I'm left with no option but to make Even though we've got a second at no, no, Well, no, I'm left with no option but to make a ruling, and that's in line with our meeting regulations. And that is that I'm sorry, I uh, will not accept this motion this evening. There is, as you'd be aware, um, an option to move our rescission motion at our next meeting with regards to Councillor Ritchie's motion. If that's a path you wish to go down. I don't need to put words in my mouth, thanks. Well, well I'll just make the point... <laughs> you've, made, you've made a decision. Councillor James, excuse me. Councillor James. Fine. 
Councillor James, this was stepped out to you over a week and a half ago. The meeting regulations are quite clear, they govern all of us. So I'm sorry, but uh, I'm left with no option Major but to, to rule that that's, that that's out of order. Colleagues, moving now on to um, item number 10, Councillor Question Time. Questions on notice, there's nothing on notice. 10.2, there's no answers to questions on notice. Um, answers to questions without notice in the previous council meeting are listed in the agenda. Questions without notice, Councillor Mulder. A uh, question on the 10.3, um, the answer to one of my questions. My question was a two-part one oh. regarding um, um, an explanation which has been given regarding the booking of Wentworth Park being mistaken being a mistaking booking for the playing surface yes. and not the club rooms that had been pre-booked by Clarence Zebras. I acknowledge that, Mr Mayor, but the second part of my question uh, was regarding the legality of the sale of alcohol to those people who... Thank you, Councillor Mulder. And that has um, been addressed. We take this one on notice? Yeah. Can we take that on notice, Councillor Mulder, and uh, apologise to the other side? <laughs> but we'll, it'll, be, it'll be in the agenda um, of, of our next meeting, but, but thank you for... Uh, for highlighting that. Uh, are there any other um, qu answers to questions without notice in the previous council meeting? There being none, we'll move now on to questions without notice. And I will uh, start with uh, Councillor Kennedy. Nothing from me, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Chong? Nothing from me. Councillor Warren? Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have two questions. Um, further to a question that was asked earlier, um, regarding the um, extension of the permit on Rosney Hill. And this is in response to a query from a constituent. Um, at what stage do we decide that something is important enough to come back to council to make that decision about an extension or uh, that it can be made by a planning officer? The, the feeling in the community was that this was important enough that the council should be making the decision. So how do we make that distinction on matters like Thank this? Thank you, Councillor Warren. I'll ask the Chief Executive Officer to, to answer that, or, well, it's up to you, or Mr Lovell. Oh, thanks. So, yeah. Through you, Mr Mayor, I'm not sure whether this will answer your question in the way you are searching. Um, I can only say that um, the Council has, uh, has uh, provided delegated powers to the officers to deal with certain matters that are... Uh, proceed, actually procedural in nature uh, through to permits of various kinds. Um, uh, it, uh, it has done so in the knowledge that uh, any application falling into those particular categories would be dealt with under delegation. Um, there's no provision in the delegation which would give any direction to uh, what type of items should notwithstanding be referred to a council meeting or some other body. So without any any direction other than the direction of the delegation itself, which is just specifies the nature of particular matters we deal with, um, I'm, th there is no guidance for me to, uh, to, uh, to send any particular item to the council or to try and guess, if you like, um, pick winners or guess which ones should go. So um, I'm simply governed by the, the uh, delegation. It would be a matter for the council to decide whether we should change that delegation. Thank you, Ms. Lovell. Councillor Warren. I'd ask a follow up question. So, it, it would be possible for council, a council decision to say we want any future extensions to come back to us for review? See you. Uh, Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, we might need to take that one on notice in terms of the legality of specifically providing that decision on one planning matter and not on on uh, them in total, but uh, we'll take that on notice and come back to you. Thank you. If that information would be included in the minutes, I'd be appreciative. Your My third second question... question hmm? yeah, over to you, Councillor Warren. My second question, again, in response to a constituent inquiry, um, uh, which is a frequent occurrence on this particular topic, I remember... Uh, maybe last year, possibly even the year before, we were doing a business case on FOGO, and can I ask for an update on where we're up to on that, please? Uh, uh, certainly. Uh, Mr Graham. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, um, we, we've no further progressed that uh, at the moment, but it's likely it'll be uh, one of the items discussed um, in the budget coming up, um, the 23-24 budget um, discussions. Thank you, Mr Graham. Thank you, Councillor Warren. Councillor Darko. Thank you. Councillor Goyne. Councillor James. A couple of things, sir. We only get two. I know. 
Unless it's a cleverly worded supplementary. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, my question through you to Mr Lovell. With regard to the um, one Gordon Street, Richmond, where you exercised your delegation and to approve it under delegation, did you, do you actually um, uh, seek in writing from the applicant to say that they refuse to grant an extension of time or is it done verbally over the phone and a notation is made on the pad to say that they... Thank, thank you, Councillor James. Uh, Mr Lovell? Through you, Mr Mayor, uh, we uh, normally ask uh, uh, verbally or over the phone um, and uh, particularly where it's an urgent matter, it's the only way we can reach someone. Um, we can't compel them to respond in writing. Uh, we do uh, also uh, use emails to to, uh, to try and track people down too. So it's a it's a question of um, our preference is to do it in writing, but our preference uh, but our sometimes uh, circumstances of urgency mean that we accept a verbal uh, uh, um, declaration that they're not prepared to consider the agreement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In this case, I, I'm, I'm unaware of. <laughs> so I'm unaware of uh, the particular method we use on this occasion. Thank you, Mr Lovell. Uh, Councillor Jones? <coughs> the second question is <coughs> in relation to the um, uh, niche, niche um, structure plan. Excuse my voice. Uh, Mr Lovell, in relation to the niche structure plan on the Tram Tramie Peninsula, uh, <coughs> my understanding is that there is a um, urban growth boundary matter that sits within that plan that basically says quite categorically that no development over the 70 metre contour level. Given that there is another project that's sort of in the pipeline with Skylands, can we mix and match or can we discard or basically start afresh, given that Council did spend, I think, 80,000 on the structure plan, if I stand corrected? Thank you, Councillor James. Uh, Mr. Perhaps a response, thanks. Mr Mayor, um, the uh, niche uh, project it has approximately 50% of the amount left in the budget to complete the project. The project was put on hold by the by council uh, decision um, when uh, when the uh, at a workshop when the Skylands proposal came up, um, and the purpose of that uh, deferment was to deter to wait and see what the outcome of the Skylands project would be, and then to resume the niche work from there. Um, because there is uh, the project is incomplete, uh, uh, in the event that any changes were re required as a result of any decision council might make on that Skylands proposal, there is scope to alter the brief or, or change the direction of the study accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Lovell. Councillor Hume. Um, you might all like to know that. Um, Minori's uh, one set down against Djokovic. Um, the a number of people raised the issue of the uh, parking and the um, Bellary Ferry service with me during the election and, and also after it. Um, so I put a elected members request about you know what what options, if any, are being explored. Um, the response I I got in a memo um, was that uh, it wasn't con considered to be a park and ride service, and that people were encouraged to, um, passengers encouraged to walk, cycle, or be dropped off or connect via public transport. Um, I'm just interested to know, that's, that's obviously the intention with the service, but I'm interested to know um, how well that matches the, the practicality um, and the reality of what's happened. Has there been any investigation into whether the service has had an impact on parking in the area and to what extent. Thank you, Councillor Hume. Uh, Mr Graham, or yes, thank you, Mr Graham. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, from recollection, we uh, presented some information to Council at a workshop, I think in August, um, and then made some changes um, to some parking restrictions in the area. So, because um, our um, principal engineer had um, been undertaking survey of parking for an entire year, 
and so I had good relevant data, um, I can um, reproduce that information um, uh, to Council. And they circulate that in a yep. weekly briefing, that'd be great. Thank you. Councillor Hume, a second question. Thank you. Councillor Hunter? Nothing. Councillor Mulder? Yep. Um, my first question relates to the ongoing drainage issues at Wellington Road, Richmond, much of which results from the large vegetable farm and its heavy water usage and accelerated by the approved subdivision, uh, the Richmond Green subdivision. My question is, will this overflow um, and inadequate stormwater drainage be addressed when the Richmond Green subdivision is completed and how? Thank you, Councillor Mulder. Mr Graham? Uh, through Mr May, I'll have to take that one on notice and I'll provide information to Council. Thank you. Can you make it circulate in a weekly briefing report too? Councillor Mulder, a second question? My second qu question is, um, to me, at the last meeting, the CEO advised that commitments made at elections are not prejudgments and therefore do not raise conflict of interest issues. On a related matter, would a conflict of interest arise where a person has made a contribution to a councillor's election campaign? Chief Executive Officer. Uh, thank you for the question. We'll need to take that one on notice. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Given the number of elected member requests I issued today, I'm not here to the workload. Okay, wonderful. Well, uh, colleagues, that brings us now to item 11, closed meeting. I'll call for a motion to move into closed meeting. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, Second and Councillor Chonk. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your company this evening. Uh, we'll now move into closed meeting and uh, if we could stop the feed as well, please. <laughs>